Hey and welcome. I'm your boy Solo. In this video, I'll be going over the Starlink internet setup and installation and what my experience has been with it so far. The real question though, can you stream on it? Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. I ordered my Starlink kit on June 2nd, 2022, so it hasn't been very long yet. I've only had it for a few months. I'm not going to do an unboxing because I did that a long time ago, but the kit did come with a dish with a 75 foot cord pre-attached to the dish, a base, for basic setup and a modem that's Wi-Fi only. There is no Ethernet port on the modem. Keep that in mind. This The kit that they send you is just for basic setup and testing and it's not everything that you need to get fully set up. They send you a test kit with a short cord and a ground mount and Wi-Fi only mount and nothing more. With no Ethernet adapter, if you need to connect anything other than your phone, you will need to go to the Starlink store and pick up an Ethernet adapter. So if you have no Wi-Fi or wireless things in your house, like if your computer is connected over Ethernet, you will have to get an Ethernet adapter from the store. A few things I do suggest picking up when you pick up your dish. The Ethernet adapter, a 150 foot cord, and either the roof or pole mount. I suggest these things because I found the 50, the 75 foot cord not quite long enough to mount it anywhere at all. It wasn't a two story house and a 10 foot pole on top. Of, you run out of space for it. To hook up anything else besides just my phone, I had to have the ethernet adapter. So that was unfortunate. I don't know why they just don't include that in the price. It makes no sense. But what do I know? That might be a thing people want. Only Wi-Fi, nothing else, and no other means to access it. Um, if that's you, leave a comment below. I'm very curious if Wi-Fi only is something you'd rather over having an Ethernet plug. The dish comes with the cables plugged into it. All you need to do is place your dish outside with the best view of the sky you can and to make sure you have it placed before plugging it in because it is going to start to move and try and find satellites and stuff like that first thing you plug it in. So once it's plugged in, the dish is going to start to move. So all you need to do is plug the dish into the rotor and then plug the rotor into the wall. That's best practice. You don't want to plug the rotor into the wall and then plug a live cable into your dish if you might ruin your cable. That is something to take note of. I've already had to get my cable replaced one time. I don't know if it was due to that or due to just damage out in the weather because a bad storm came and my internet was down for a couple of weeks and I had to wait for new parts. So that does happen. There is a couple of things that can go wrong. So just make sure that you're careful during the hooking up that you don't tug the cord too hard at the, on the dish just to make sure that you don't damage anything. At this point on your phone, you can try connecting to it. It should say Starlink internet in the Wi-Fi area. So when you go to your phone and you go to your Wi-Fi, it should show up in the selections as a uh, Starlink internet. You can try to connect to it. It should ask you at that point at that point, it should ask you to make a name and a password. You can also download the Starlink app to your phone, or if you have a laptop or a PC that got Wi-Fi, you can connect to the Starlink, and then you can type in your browser, 192.168.100.1. That's the default IP to access your Starlink rotor. So that's how you're going to get access to it if you don't have the app. That was unfortunate. I run into that. I had to buy a Wi-Fi card for my computer so that I could access it while I was waiting for other part. But that is something to note and keep in mind. If you don't have any means to connect to it wirelessly, make sure that you order that an Ethernet adapter along with the dish or you'll be stuck for a few weeks waiting for shipping. If everything went well, you should be connected to the internet. If you run into some problems, try resetting the modem, powering it on, powering it off, and following the troubleshooting guide. Another thing to remember is to make sure that there is nothing in the way of the dish. Check in the direction that it's pointing with your eyes. You should be able to see if there's anything that's obstructing it. Make sure there is nothing in the way blocking the line of sight to the sky. You can also use the app to check for these things before your Starlink kit lands, but my phone wasn't compatible with the app, so I actually had to wait for it to land, and it takes 12 hours after you start it up before it'll tell you actually if there is any red on the screen. It'll let you know if there's anything obstructing the way. I've had this here kit for a few months, and I've been testing a few things like the internet speeds, the ping, the latency, the up and down, and can you stream on it? The short answer is no, not really. Um, if you have any other internet provider in your area that gives you a 1.5 up, that's going to be just as stable as when you're, what you're going to get here. You're going to be at a 720p stream, 1500 kilobytes. That's all I could get stable. We'll go over those results. I have a hours of testing now and I recorded it all. So 
let's jump into the stats and go over how the internet is. Maybe it is right for you if you don't have any other options. This is, was great for me. I needed this. I upload videos all the time. As much as it's not great for streaming and I do drop the connections, if you're willing to put up with a little bit of that stuff, this will get you online. This will get your stream going and yeah, it might be a 480p, 720p stream, 30 frames per second, 1500 kilobytes at maximum, 2500 kilobytes maximum. That'll be fine. It'll get you online. Your downloads will be great. You'll be able to watch lots of content. And to be honest, when I upload a video, sometimes it goes up to 30 megs a second. Just the problem with the Starlink internet that I've found so far is it dips down to 800 kilobytes and jumps up to 30 megabytes every few seconds. And like I said, we'll go over the stats and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The first thing that I will be covering is the download and upload speed. I run a lot of tests every day and found that I averaged a speed around 100 to 250 megabytes a second for download and my upload varied from 5 to 20 on average. And this is really good compared to the internet that I used to have and the speeds were quite a bit better. But when it comes to streaming, it didn't quite look like it kept a stable connection for longer than 20 minutes. It often dipped to 1.6 or 2 or less than that. And this is a little bit of a problem when you're streaming. This does cause quite a bit of stuttering. It causes quite a bit of hitching, loading. And I run into this here problem quite a bit. I did run about 20 or 30 streams. I tried to run one every single day. I uh, did lots of 15 to 20 minute tests to try and figure out if I could get streams in just shorter amount of times. If I could, if I could find some kind of regularity to the dips, but that wasn't the case. I found it very unstable. It fluctuated quite a bit. That is some of the caveats, some of the problems that there is still with the Starlink internet. It is unstable, but it is getting a quite a bit better. When I first got my unit, I was getting interruptions every five seconds. I could barely even play games. From the day I got it to just a couple of weeks ago when I got my refreshed new unit, the difference in my internet has been night and day. Instead of disconnecting and reconnecting every five seconds or having network interruptions, that all cleared up whatever they did for their last update. Fixed up quite a bit of stuff. That has me clear sailing. I think I can hold a stream now for as long as I do not turn my settings up. I have to run it at 1500 kilobytes or under. So 1500 bitrate is about as max as I could run it without running into a problem. Now if you're only streaming for an hour and you do it at uh, 2000 or 2500, the only problem is, is your delay is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it hits a certain percent where it has to lag your stream to catch up. Now keep that in mind, that is some of the problems with Starlink internet, but it is great for other things. If you're watching Netflix, if you're watching any TV service, if you just need it for internet and you're not streaming, this is, this is great service. I love the download speed, I love the upload speed. This is great for me, I make content all the time and uploading a, a video that's 10, 15 gigabytes long is now only taking me a few hours instead of taking me all day. I get a peak of about 30 megabytes a second for my upload speed and that's incredible for my uploads. But like I said again, streaming, there is some problems and they are working on it. But And I would watch it. If you're interested in getting this for streaming, I would definitely look into it, but I would watch it. Unless you've got a thousand dollars to spend on the dish, four or five hundred dollars on accessories, and then a bill of a hundred and forty to a hundred and ten to a hundred and forty dollars with taxes in is something that you'll have to look into. Is this worth the price for you? The answer for me was yes, because I live in a spot where this is all that they offer. I upload videos so often, if I didn't have this here internet, I would be stuck uploading. Some of my videos take three and four days at seven and under megabyte internet. I only just upgraded from three megabytes a second, so this was actually a quite a big upgrade for me and it was quite needed. But if I had any other options, this would not be a very good option. If there was anything, if Bell or or any other service was just right here at my doorstep, it wouldn't be the same. Every other spot, like a stable connection over ethernet or fiber op would be a lot better. So if you think you're gonna save money or just gain a little bit of speed over the normal ISPs, you're definitely not. This is only gonna help you out if you don't have any other options. This is good anywhere, so as long as you don't have a bunch of trays. I threw mine out in the yard. It's great. It looks great, and, well, it doesn't look great. If you seen what mine was on, you, you'd have a laugh. I just have it strapped up there on a table, and my service is great. And like I said, I can show a couple streams on here. I'm going to end it here with a few streams. I'll put them up so you can see what they look like. I'll show the different bit rates, and you'll see the skipping and the ones with the high bit rate. And the ones with low bit rate, they might not look good, but I'm online, and I'm live on Twitch. So that's got me that's got me going, that got me a start, and that's all there is to it, guys. That's that's everything. I just wanted to go over it. I'm just touching base on it. I will 
I, I will have an update on this here again in the future. I'm looking at doing this here for another six months. Or if there's future updates, more satellites, or if the speeds change, I will do an update to make sure that I bring everyone up to speed and how the internet's working for me. But that's it for me, guys. That's my first look over, my first review of this here internet, my first look at it, just to see how it's going. And so far, so good. The only problem was, like I said, streaming, kind of a pain, but not a deal breaker for me. That was just an inconvenience. I'll have to learn a way around it or find other means or hope that they get better. I'm hoping in six months that I'll be online and live just like I used to be. That's everything that I had to talk about for the Starlink internet until my next update, guys. I hope this here helped you out in some way. The setup is pretty straightforward for this. It's pretty easy to connect and the internet's working pretty consistently. The one thing I gotta say too, uh, the support wasn't too bad. I did break a piece of equipment. Uh, they replaced the cord and modem for me, but it did take two weeks. So make sure you are careful hooking things up that you don't break anything or just pull on it too hard because pulling on your cables might actually break one of them. So definitely keep that in mind. Double check things. Look it all over. That's all I had to cover on Starlink Internet. It's just a setup, just a straightforward, just a kind of a look over what this here has to offer and maybe what the future has to hold. I'm hoping this here has a bright future ahead of it. I hope it keeps going. I hope it pushes other internet providers to step their game up because right now in my area, internet's $90 for 7 megabytes and that is absolutely ridiculous. For 10 more dollars, I can get 250 and yeah, it's unstable and I'm having a hard time streaming on it. But my games work fine, my movies work fine. Instead of trying to stress about where I'm going to get an extra couple megabytes or not being able to watch Netflix, this here got me straightened out. And I super appreciate that there is another internet service provider out there that I can pick from because I am sick of all of the internet providers I've gone with so far. The price for the megabytes that you get just sometimes isn't worth it. And this is the choice I'm going with because they offer the best in my area and just nobody else can even compare. But I'm going to leave it on that note. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if if you like or found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and go subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.